Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, we are going to basically set up the overall engine configuration in the actual ECU itself. So again, we're starting from a completely blank, you know, uh, base configuration that just came with the ECU. So I'm going to go through the major things that you need to set up first of all. So uh, starting at the top here under configuration, so you see that would normally be closed down. So you go into configuration, you're telling it what cylinders you are. So we're using a 3UZ, so we know it's an eight cylinder engine, it's four stroke. Uh, we don't need a custom TDC because we've got um, all the data and everything that we need. You can put your vehicle identification number in if you wanted to. So that's just that little configuration there to set up. Next thing that you want to do is you're going to want to do your firing firing order. So as default, it's gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And obviously a 3UZ is not that firing order. So we're going to change it to 18436572. So it's going to be 1843. Go back, make sure. 18436572. So we're going to go 6. Five, seven, and two. Okay. Now you'll see it's highlighted in blue. That means it's not actually been stored to the ECU. So there's two ways that you can store something. Once I've put this in, obviously I want to store that information to the ECU. So obviously what you can do is you can either go into ECU controls and you can click store to ECU. You see it says store completed successfully. Or as you can see, your shortcut key for that is going to be Control and S. So if I press Control S now, you'll see there store completed successfully. So double check everything. So we've got one eight four three six five seven two. Fantastic. So we're happy with that firing order. Now moving along, we want to go into the fuel setup. So that's going to be how we're going to set our injectors, etc. Under fuel, you've got fuel setup and you've got fuel main. Okay. So first option here is obviously how your system works. So in our case. We're sequential because it's a 3UZ and we've got a link extreme. So we're able to fire wire all eight injectors individually. So we're going to go sequential, but you can also have group or staged. You can have sequential and staged. So if you've got another set of injectors you want to um, you know, activate above, say, 5,000 RPM or whatever, you can do sequential or staged. And then you can do semi-sequential, which is basically if you have to group them into sets of, of sets of two okay, or more. Okay, so obviously we're going to go sequential. Now you've got fuel equation mode. Now you do have a few options here, okay? We've got traditional. So what they mean by traditional is effectively you have what they call a master fuel. So in other words, this is gonna be, if you put 100 in the VE table, this is how long the injector is gonna open for, 15 milliseconds. So if we go over to our actual fuel table over here, so if we said, let me just, See if we can move that around. Right, okay, so we've got 15 milliseconds is our thingy. So this here where it says 100, or close to here where it says 100, at that stage over there, that means the injector is going to be open for 15 milliseconds. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. You have the other way, which is effectively what we call modeled, which is much more like a, basically the way that I, I do it. It t takes the engine information and actually uses calculations. Okay, so it's proper speed density style. So as I click on modeled, you'll see now it changes. Okay, so now we've got our equation load source. In other words, where we're getting our load from. So we're using a map sensor. Uh, let's say you were using individual throttle bodies, then obviously you would take a TPS or something like that. Okay, and then what you're going to have is you're going to have your engine capacity to put in. So this is the information now because it's doing like a VE style. It needs to know what size the engine is, etc., etc. So for now, we're just going to put 4,300 because it's a 3UZ, so it's 4.3 liter. Okay, now we're going to go to fuel system type. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to put in exactly how we're operating the fuel system. What they mean by that actually is whether or how the fuel is regulated. So effectively what it means by map reference is manifold absolute pressure reference. In other words, if you're using a fuel pressure regulator that has a connection to the manifold pressure, so in other words, it'll bring the fuel pressure down or raise the fuel pressure in a turbo application, that's the option that you're going to choose. Uh, if you're like in our case, we're running a 3UZ that's naturally aspirated and it's actually going into an IS300. So effectively, we know that we've got a returnless system. So in the IS300, there's a fuel pressure regulator built into the tank by the fuel pump. And that is going to then control the fuel pressure and it will remain constant no matter what. Okay. Uh, and then obviously, you've got your other option here, which is effectively a fuel pressure sensor. 
So you can also choose that and this customer might choose to do that because he does actually have a fuel pressure and temperature sensor. So what we'll do is we'll go from there and then effectively we can, we, the ECU can then decide based on fuel pressure that's actually reading on the actual engine itself, how to do the equations from there. This information you just leave unless you're using different fuels and you know exactly what you're trying to do. Uh, stoichiometric ratio, they put this in again if you're using something like ethanol or E85 or methanol or so on and so forth, you can change that rating over there. But for most guys, NA or turbocharged but just using pump gas, you just leave all of these settings as they are from there. Okay. So again, you'll see that these ones that I've changed are obviously now in blue. So I'm just going to press Control S. And you'll see now they change to white. So now if you change anything on the ECU, it'll stay in blue and it won't become a permanent feature until you press Control S or you go to ECU controls and you store ECU. Okay, so that's our fuel side of it now. So I'm not going to go into all the other stuff there. We'll do individual videos for those sections over there. But next one we want to do is we want to go to the ignition. We want to go into ignition main over here. And this is where you're going to choose what type of ignition system you're running. So you can either have off if maybe you're running at just using the ECU as a fuel based you can have distributor so like a 1UZ non-BVTI twin distributor like a 1UZ non-BVTI you can have wasted sparks so let's say you're running like an Atom or something that didn't have eight ignition outputs on a V8 and you were running them in a wasted spark setup you would choose that then obviously in our case because we've got the ability to run eight fully sequential we're going to go direct spark and then you've got your two rotary engine options so this is you're going to choose this depending on your setup and how it's set up for you Okay, so we're going to go direct spark. Uh, spark edge, we're going to choose falling because we've got basically coils with built-in igniters. We're using the standard 3UZ coils. Just check if you are using some coils, which one is best for your setup. Uh, like I said, it's this is we're going to base it on a 3UZ that we're doing now, but obviously your engine could be different. So you're going to have to get that information from either the people that have sold you the coils or the people that are installing it for you. If they'll set it up, they'll do that for you there. Okay, so that's just the three main things that I wanted to get out because it's effectively telling the ECU exactly what we got. So now it knows we've got a, a, an eight cylinder. We knows we're firing uh, fully sequential fuel. It knows we're firing fully sequential injection. We're using the modeled scenario and for the fuel uh, pressure equ equation for the injector timings, we're obviously using a fuel pressure sensor. So that's going to be incredibly accurate on that. Okay, so I don't want to make these videos too long. So I'm just going to skip, we're going to finish this one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into smaller sections so that you guys can just go ahead and pick all the videos there. These will all be in a long playlist for you anyway. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon.